Welcome back, Zerkai fans, to the last match for today. It's going to be a match between Golden Anarchid, our main host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury. I, I'm not even sure what I actually used to introduce myself earlier on today, come to think of it. But, yeah, I'm me, so here's the game, and let's get started. Golda going for the Tank Factory. Ooh, haven't seen much of that recently. Anarchid going for the Rover Assembly. Much more typical on this map, but I'm kind of curious how this is going to work. I mean, Tank versus Rover, or... Heavy Tank versus Light Vehicle from before the renames. That is a classic matchup. However, I'm not really sure how this is going to work because, well, we haven't seen a lot of tanks recently. Rovers have been reasonably popular, but tanks just haven't shown up. If there's any map that would make tanks work, it would be this one. But I just want to see what Gota does. So, Gota starting with Kodachi. Nothing unusual there. Same thing. Scorcher coming in from Anarchid, so... Honestly, neither way is it anything out of the ordinary. But right now, Golda is going to be managing to get a little bit of discouragement on just that Scorcher. Push it away. It shouldn't die, but it should be at least scared away. And that keeps Golda's base that much safer. While at the same time, though, also the Scorcher going back is realizing that Golda is going to be har harassing with that Kodachi. So you want to put some defense there. At this point, though, the Fencer is up, and that is a pretty good choice. Fencer on top of the picket should be enough to discourage the Kodachi from dealing too much damage, but at this point... Oh, Goda's just going to want to find some weak spot they can go into. Something that they can get a bit of value in. Not too much. Kodachis are very much hit and run. But as long as they get some value, especially economic value, they should be fine. They're not going to have too many issues to worry about here. While at the same time, with Golda, it's not like anything has really responded. Golda is... I'm sorry, with Anarchid, rather. Nothing's responded. No real counteroffense because Golda is the one doing most of the aggression. Until the Kodachis go away, there's not a whole that Anarchid is likely comfortable doing. Especially since at this point they're much more focused on building their economy than building their army. And considering their current energy values, I'm not really sure I blame them. Though to be fair, I'm a bit surprised they haven't been building as much power. Golda, on the other hand, they're doing fine for power. they got the solar collectors coming up, they've got everything that they need for the metal they have, and for the metal they're going to get in the next little while. Anarchid, on the other hand, is a little bit behind, and now making up for that, so they should be fine before they start really accessing metal. But that does put them in a slightly awkward position in terms of army size, because Gota right now, they're they're going for the blitzes. They're, they've got some stuff set up. They can easily just get in their army. And they can get that slightly better metal economy. They can get that slightly better production economy. Turn that into, in this case, more energy. But that will later turn to more metal as the, mace, as the welder rather finds itself on another metal extractor. And the Kodachi finds itself dead. Able to get rid of the Scorcher that killed it in the process. So not a complete free kill. But that does leave Anarchid's base completely unassaulted. So Anarchid can now build up with more confidence and attack with some confidence as well. They can actually get back in and see what they can do to Gota's base, or at least scout out Gota's base. But I don't know that they're going to do that too quickly. They do have the one damaged Scorcher going forward just to see if Gota has expanded to the south, which indeed they have, but nothing going into the main base yet. I mean, An Anarchid very likely knows that Gota has gone for blitzes, or will assume that. And they'd be correct. Which means they probably don't want to focus too much on Scorchers attacking, since that's not going to work out especially well as we're about to see. Like, that's that Scorcher's just going to get stunned. And that, yeah, Anarchid not even trying to go for it. They're aware of Golda's position. They're not too keen on killing themselves to throw metal at it. I mean, really, that'd be what it would be. It'd be a metal donation. It wouldn't be much else. But at this point, the Scorcher is actually able to find the Commander position, which is kind of nice. Not enough Scorchers are going to be up to actually kill the Commander early on. But, still, some scouting has been done. Some information has been gained. Anarchid's not doing too badly there. They are, however, starting to excess metal a little bit. And that's just a question of build power. Partly a question of energy, but mostly a question of build power, which is being handled right now with the Caretaker. While at the same time, Anarchid's commander going up north, building up that metal, but doesn't have the energy to make it quite work. So this will end up excessing a little bit. They do have the energy in storage, so they should be fine for now. It's just... When you're dealing with Golda, when you're fighting Golda, any little mistake is going to be a problem. At, at, really, at this level, any little mistake in terms of economy can cost you the game. Any mistake in terms of energy, any mistake in terms of where metal is positioned, any of that stuff, like that can really cost the economy. And I do like this, however. The darts coming in here, making it very difficult for the Blitzes to actually get any mileage. They are managing to hit some of the Scorchers, but it's not quite enough. And that does mean the Blitzes, they're, get, well, they're getting hit. That blitz explosion that stunned the darts, that does mean the second blitz is not going to be targeting the darts. Because of the way the blitz AI works. 
So that didn't quite work after the first one, but still got a blitz for basically one Scorcher. That is worth it. Scorchers are 130 to a blitz is 300. So hey, good value there from Anarchid. The downside, however, is that Anarchid is behind economically. They are losing some metal extractors thanks to Squidachi over in their in the path to the main base between the main base and the commander. And they are not really managing to use that metal that they had. I mean they are now, but again, power plants are just now being built to deal with that. And Anarchid's commander does have a lightning rifle, which is actually exactly what I'd go for in this situation. So the Kodachi won't have much of a chance. Not to mention the way this hill is built. The Kodachi doesn't have much of a chance either. So nice use of the terrain there, Anarchid. At the same time, though, Anarchid is managing to get a lot of mileage out of the fencers, but only briefly. Too many blitzes coming in here, and it's not enough for the fencers. The darts are in, but that's just too late, unfortunately. And not enough darts either to get through all the blitzes and just exhaust their attacks. So, now you try from Anarchid, I like the ideas, just not enough numbers, not enough coordination. But still, I like that idea. The, the unit composition seems intelligent, it's just a matter of coordination. Like, those blitzes are at an advantageous situation. Like, it does require a bit more work from the rovers to deal with the blitzes than for the blitzes to deal with anything coming at them. At least with this setup, I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing Ravagers as support for the fencers. Just because Ravagers take a lot more to be paralyzed. I mean, they, it takes about four shots to paralyze a Ravager. Whereas this, the Scorchers, I mean, they, like I said, they just go down. They can't easily deal with this stuff. The Blitz is ripping to shreds. So it's, that's the thing, is that there's not an easy way of dealing with this. The Scorchers, essentially right now, just being the fodder so the Fencers can get some damage in. But even then, that was essentially all for nothing. That was a metal donation to Gota to the tune of 200 metal. So, at this point, Anarchid's not doing especially great as far as metal goes. They are managing to build up, managing to hold on, but I would really like to see something coming in. I mean, the Dominatrices aren't a bad idea. I would, however, kind of like to see, like I said, Ravagers on top of this, or Levelers on top of this, or both. Like, Ravager, Leveler, with Fencer in the back. That would be able to get rid of the Blitzes without too many issues. However, the Dominatrices also would help. That is a thing, too. Those do exist as units. And that is at least causing Gota a bit of trouble. However, we should see pretty quickly switch over to Ogres or Reapers. Ooh, actually, that's dangerous. I mean, I get the thinking. You just plow through. But there's four Dommies here. Like, that is enough. They could pretty easily grab that ra that Reaper. Or not... Is it still... No, it's not Reaper anymore. It's Minotaur. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's an interesting idea, but like I said, I would I would go for an ogre personally. Now I'd want to have that splash damage in there, but that's that's not what we're seeing. We are indeed seeing basically the exact food that that dominatrices would love to have, and cyclops on top of that as well. That is curious. I mean, the slow ray makes sense. That would that would stop the dominatrices from doing as much damage, and overall would help support the rest of the forces. The main cannon would kill the commander, but not much else is really a heavy tank of that sort. Still, though, this is an interesting approach. I mean, Anarchid, how many dominates do they have? Eight domin- Who builds eight dominatrices? Really? Okay. I mean, I want to see this work now. Like, I've never seen someone build this many dommies in one game. I just want to see how this is actually going to work. I want to see this entire group of, of blitzes turned around onto Gota, just to have some vindication for this, because this is an interesting strategy I'm just doubtful that it's actually going to amount to much. But hey, the Minotaur is up there, and that's the thing. I mean, this is 80 capture per second, so we have 8 of them. That's 640 capture per second. That takes 10 seconds to capture a Minotaur. So, that could work. Assuming I have the numbers right. Actually, no, I don't have the numbers right, because that's actually way faster than I thought it was. But I'm not actually entirely sure how that capture damage works. Like, 78 DPS, I'm pretty sure it has to do with current HP... But it looks like it's going way faster. So if someone could enlighten me in the exact mechanics of that, because it's not lining up with the health values. Like, I know that capture value relates to health value. A weaker unit is easier to capture, or a unit with lower HP is easier to capture. But how that relates to the numbers in question, I'm not sure. But still, clearly, this amount of domination sees is actually way faster at doing the exact thing I'm thinking than anything else would be. Oh, also, I didn't even notice that. Nice new artifacts. I like that. It's better than the weird dotted line was before. This is this is pretty. 
Nice little upgrade. But at this point, yeah, Anarchy is essentially just playing unit judo. I mean, metal extractor is being turned over, and Lotus is likely to be turned over pretty soon. And if that Reaper comes in any anywhere, it's not Reaper, the Minotaur comes in anywhere near there, it'll be turned around. It's something that the Rover Factory can do. And now we're seeing the Ravagers. Okay, this is what I was thinking of before, but hey, with the Dommies, nine Dommies around here, that could still have a lot of value. And yeah, this is where the, that's where the Psychops comes in. Get rid of the Commander. That's what I figured. Get rid of the Commander. Just generally plow down everything. I'm curious if the Dommies are going to try to take that out too. It'd be, it'd be risky. It'd be cool, but it'd be risky. One thing that would be actually really interesting is if Anarchy had managed to capture the Commander from Golda. Get that storage back, get that economy. That would be funny. I don't think that would work, but that would be pretty hilarious. At this point, though, it looks like it is going to be definitely targeting the Cyclops. And the Cyclops it should be able to get away. No! Although, whether or not it's actually captured is a different question. At this point, though, one of the Reapers is not even managing. It's, this, it's that slow beam. That slow coming out from the Cyclops is doing a great job just maintaining a strong position. But at this point, like, Anarchy, I just, I'm really enjoying the fact that the Anarchy is using all these dominatrices as effectively as they are. I mean, it's tricky because the Ravagers are having to run essentially interference for the slow beam. But, done enough, yeah, they can actually make that happen and, ooh, was that one Minotaur? No, not quite. Thanks to the, thanks to the Cyclops stopping that with the slow beam. But still, it's just a matter of comparative speed. Like, compare the speeds between the Dominatrix and the Minotaur. I mean, the Minotaur is walking, is moving slightly faster than the Dominatrix. It's just having to be turned around a bit to help capture. But that's it. Sorry to help capture, to help not be captured. But at this point, the Cyclops has been captured. Turn around slightly, and this is exactly perfect for Anarchy because it is designed to get rid of Minotaurs. I mean, it goes down, so it's less value for that. But still, Anarchy is getting a lot from this. I'm actually really impressed. And on top of that, all of the Blitzes. All the Blitzes being turned around. And I don't see what Gold is doing other than building a bunch of Minotaurs and just trying to plow through everything. But again, they are losing some of those Minotaurs to the Dominatrices. They, I mean, they can outrun them. But there are still seven of them. And Anarchy, while they don't seem to be building any more, they're getting loads of value from the ones they have built thus far. I mean, pushing Gold back, setting things up so the Dominatrices can just capture everything inside of Goda's expansion, inside of Goda's forward expansion. And really, that's what matters. The fact that these dummies can just take everything. Although, at some cost, I mean, it's not free. But hey, another yet another Stardust going to them. However, every, every time a Dominatrix dies, that could mean one of these captured buildings or captured units does get, retur does get returned to Goda. And that's an important thing to bear in mind, is that the Dominatrices need to stay alive in order to maintain this position. Anarchist's position right now is quite tenuous, and even then, they're still kind of behind in terms of production. And they have the Fusion Raptor coming up for the extra energy, which is good, that makes sense. But it works... Oh, okay, Steel Blue pointing out that the capture value is about metal value, not about health, which I guess is scaled by the current HP. That makes more sense. Yeah, because these things are 850 each, so yeah, 78 would mean 10 seconds from one Dominatrix to capture a Minotaur. Which lines up far more with the timings I saw. But yeah, the fact that this is just being turned around completely, I just, I find this hilarious. I kind of wish Anarchy would have built a few more Dominatrices just to secure this further. Or just to capture Golda's commander. I just, I've never seen a commander be captured by Dominatrices. That would be, that would be amazing. That'd be hilarious. I don't think we're going to see it, but I, I would love it. It would be great. But hey. That would be very risky. I don't, I don't see that happening. Cool, but risky. Like, near suicidal risky. Although we do have more dummies coming up, so we could actually see that. Five more, so 11 in total, assuming that the the Strider cost for worth of Minotaurs doesn't entirely annihilate Anarchy's base. And that is not a safe assumption. I mean, it's why the Dominatrices were coming back home, but it's very likely that the Reaper, or the Minotaurs are going to find everything they need for value in the time they have, and honestly, it doesn't take very long for these things to destroy the base. The Ravagers are doing a fine job protecting and distracting. That does buy the Dommies time, that does mean the Minotaurs are back, but at the same time, that's Anarchist's fusion plant gone. The factory is down as well. So, at least the Dommies are here. They can turn these re these Minotaurs back around. I keep calling them Reapers, because that was the old name. They can turn the Minotaurs back around, 
And that'll at least provide some value. Like, that'll help a little bit. Is that... Is that Caretaker really... That's healing an opponent Minotaur because it was captured. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have destroyed that. Go to why did you destroy that Caretaker? It was healing you. It was healing your units. I mean, granted, it was healing them, in a sense, for the dummies, but still. Ah, that was... That was an interesting little bit of behavior, because, yeah, the Caretaker was healing the the Minotaur when it was belonging to Anarchid, but then the control switched back. So, once that happened, well, it's still healing that unit. Still healing by unit ID. It's not checking for whether or not it's friendly, because Caretakers can heal anything. They don't have to... They don't have to be attacked... Well, they can't attack anything. Aggressive Reclaim doesn't exist in this game. But, if it did, they could use it, but they can also repair so that's a thing they can do. Almost why not? But yeah, however, Gorda does have an economic advantage, and the Dominatrices have been doing a fine job keeping Anarchid in the game. Because they are keeping Anarchid from essentially having a massive disadvantage thanks to the economic disadvantage. The Dominatrices are essentially making up for that by capturing everything. So all the things that Gorda sends ends up being turned back around, so the economic advantage ends up being used against them. And that's fine. It's just that... That does mean, ultimately, Gorda is only being torn apart by the Dominatrices to any extent. Like, they're actually, they're still ahead quite a bit. Their attrition is massively ahead, and actually, that might be, I'm not sure entirely why that says that, because really, in terms of unit value, they are ahead by 4k, but like 13k plus metal used, I'm pretty sure that this is just a bug because of the way that Dominatrices interact. Because I'm pretty sure that these Minotaurs... I mean, it'd be worth checking, but I'm guessing the Minotaurs are considered to be part of Anarchid's force, even though Gorda built them. Yeah, so Gorda is considered to be destroying these, which makes sense. I mean, they are they are now Anarchids, but they're Anarchids for free. So the attrition value, while it's massively in Gorda's favor, in terms of unit value, it doesn't line up. It's, it is in Gorda's favor by about 50%, but that's not massively. That's not this 300% attrition. Because dummies just make that tricky. They essentially give you the unit for free. So, yeah. It's a free unit value. If you if you lose it, you didn't spend anything to get it. So you can build other stuff in the meantime. Ooh, that Minotaur was not lucky. Didn't turn his turret around in time to really deal with that Stardust. Overall, though, Anarchid is just behind. They have been playing catch-up this entire game, and the dummies have been helping with that. But gradually, the dummies are being whittled down. There's six of them now. They do have quite a few things captured between them, but it's only so much. And can only do so much. And again, another Cyclops coming up, and with the Lotuses as well, these Kodachis can't do too much. They're trying. They're finding some mileage, but it's just not much. It's really not enough. I mean, the Caretaker here is just going to get healed up, and granted, that does slow down the Cyclops construction, but that's still not a huge amount. And again, the Dommies coming in here, trying to take out another Minotaur. Take another Minotaur, not take it out. Just claim it. Which they have successfully done. Ooh, actually managed to get two of them. And nicely done. But this is the thing. Anarchid needs to do this. If they want to have any shot in this game, they need to be capturing literally everything. And then turning it back around and getting value off of it. After getting it. And that's tricky to do. Still, though, at this point, Anarchid's doing a fine job managing to make that work. So, yeah, why not? Why not just go in with the free units, or nearly free units? I mean, they're getting they're getting through Golda's defenses. They're, I mean, they're meaning that Golda loses units, despite the way the attrition counter is going. That's really Golda's units going down. So overall, this is still working out really well. The only thing is that the rover factory is not being used. It's possibly going to go down very so shortly. And there's only so many dominatrices left. So... How Anarchid manages to maintain their position in this game is beyond me, since they aren't really building much. They do have a second rover assembly being built further south, and that's fine. It's just at this point, they haven't really built much, and the Dommies, again, they are getting whittled down. They aren't getting repaired very much. They are running into some problems. They haven't managed to kill a whole lot. I mean, they're managing to turn things around, and that means the units die. But compared to units that could have been built, or compared to, I guess, more Dommies or whatever else, it's not doing as much. So Anarchid right now is in a tight spot. They do have this other rover assembly, which is about to be done. But again, the amount of build power they have pushed into it, they're still accessing metal. 
I mean, their commander is... Their commander is dead. And has been dead for a while. And I really kind of wish they weren't reclaiming that as well. At the same time, it's like, just get more build power. Like, I I like the way Anarchist playing. It's very clever. It's just the economy part of it is not very efficient. And they are, they've been accessing metal or out of energy or whatever else. And the dominatrices have been the thing that's been keeping them from losing. But it's not making them win. It's just keeping them in the game. It's drawing things out. That's that's really what it is. And now they just lost 500 metal on top of that. That has got to be that has got to hurt. So I like the way that the Domis are being used. That's just Anarchid's only asset. And this is where Gorda is just going to have enough firepower to deal with it. Because at this point, they have double the unit value. I mean, even with the Domis, if the Domis manage to get everything, then it'll be an even match. If they manage to capture all this stuff, then it'll be even. But I'm not even sure they can do that without dying. And especially the way they're being positioned, the way they're moving. They're not going for the Cyclops. They're not going for the Minotaur. They're going around the back. They're going to, it looks like they're going to try to capture all these defensive structures and essentially cut off the reinforcement route. Which, I mean, that's not a bad idea in principle, but it's not the timing I would consider best. And at this point, even then, Anarchid decided just to go back. And it's, of course you are. These forces are destroying everything you've built. You can't defend against them without using the Dominatrices. That's all there is to stop this. If anything. I mean, the Cyclops has too much HP to just get torn apart by this. Like, the Stinger's going to die to it. Obviously, the darts aren't going to do anything. The Masons, at this point, just terraforming it into the ground, which I agree with. That's a good strategy that will actually keep it there for the Dominatrices to capture. So, nice little drop. Actually, really do, I really do like that. That's a really cool bit of strategy there. If the Domis come over and take out that Cyclops, then the Terraform could pull back up, and that Cyclops would be Golda's, which would allow them to push in. And allow them to take out some of these Minotaurs, or distract the Minotaurs to allow the Domis to capture them, too. I mean, this has been the entire game plan from Anarchid thus far. So it's like, go take that Cyclops. Make it your own. I mean, making the Minotaurs your own is good too, but like, just capture that thing. Especially since it's still there. It's still doing stuff. Ah, it's, it's perfect. It's It can't move. The dummies could take it, but nope. I guess they can't get underwater. But like, just terraform it back up in a way that it can't do anything. But then capture it. And then push it forward. I, I don't know. I would really like to see that. I mean, at this point, this is just vindictive. How how deep in the water is that? Like, seriously, that... I... Okay. <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, it'll never do anything again. It's, it's stuck there. That Cyclops is of no value anymore. But it's... I, okay... Yeah, no, it's just, it's gone as far down as it can go. They're just burning build power on that. At this point, Anarchid's just done. Like, they don't want to throw in the towel, but there's nothing for them. Even if they captured everything that Golda has, the reinforcement route, it's just, I don't get it. And like I said, this, especially considering that they had this Goliath, they could have, that, the Cyclops, they had that Cyclops they could use, and no, they're just burying it. That's all. That's all they're going to do. It doesn't even matter anymore. Even though it would have been really useful to get into the Minotaurs, I'm pretty sure Anarchid is just done and just wants to see what they can capture the Dominatrices before they die. Like, honestly, this is... This is all there is left. Dummies and darts and some badgers. Because why not? And I just... Please, make it complete. Capture the commander. That'd be the best. That would really be the best. If the commander gets captured, that would make this complete. I would I would feel like I wasn't it wasn't a waste of time these last ten minutes, because at this point Anarchid I mean, like I said, they had some chances, but they're not winning. They're not gonna win this. Barring several miracles in a row. And Domis do make miracles happen, but they aren't being used such that they will. They're being used more defensively, and that's there's no miracles happening there. I was like, just get ten of them. So you get ten Domis, come in there. Every second, you take one of the Reapers, or take one of the Minotaurs. But that's it. And at this point, Gota, with all the nanoforms, okay, that is that is clever. That is going to stop the Badger Mines. That is going to, also, if Domi's come forward, all is going to stop that. But the, the Minotaurs are a bit too far forward. Still, though, the Domi's aren't managing to get a lot of mileage. They have to stay back. They have to kite. They can't move in. And we aren't seeing anything close enough for the terraform tricks to happen again. Though, again, I really would like to get Goliath actually captured, but... Alas, that is not what's going to happen. 
Still, though, the Dami's not finding much anymore. I mean, they're finding a few things here and there, but this is tricky. Although it is forcing kiting again. That's actually uh, half the army turned around. So how about that? Some more value taken out there, but again, Anarchid's not able to actually kill anything with that. Not able to actually push back. And this should be game. I mean, attempts at terraforming aside, this should be game. I don't see any easy way that this would go any different. The Dommies are almost all dead. The Minotaurs are almost dead. Everything that was captured economically has been taken back. It's it's over. This is it. There's the towel. There's the GG. Anarchid did not have that game. But hey, at least they were able to get something. Yeah, this is this is the interesting thing. The unit value was all over the place because of those captures. Still, and Gota had the massive advantage, but compared to the middle income, and compared to the apparent attrition, which is mostly because of the captures, like, really, this attrition value is useless. Because, yeah, the value killed here doesn't line up with the unit value, because Gota was largely killing their own units. So, yeah, Dami's... I'm not sure how you'd actually deal with that. Because the thing is that Dominatrices, you could say unit value goes over to the capturer unless the captured unit is taken back, and then the value goes away. Which would require having an additional variable that tracks the amount of units that are captured, and then from there keeps track of what's going on. So, like, you have the unit... Like, the, the destroyed would add in the captured, and then if the unit is not captured, then that value's gone. And the unit is destroyed while captured, then it's considered... Like, then it's just... Now it's properly destroyed. That would have been a more accurate representation of how much Anarchid was getting from those dominatrices. But that is a minor point, and really, Anarchid is the one that makes the attrition widget to begin with, so if something changes there, Anarchid is going to be the one to change it. So they're well aware, I'm sure. Anyway, that was still an interesting match. We don't see a lot of Dominatrix play, we don't see a lot of tank play, but we saw both of them this match, and that... That's what happened. I think we kind of got an idea as to why we don't see a lot of that, because Dami's, unless you have a massive support army behind them, are more of a way to not lose rather than a way to win. With that, though, that is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, have a good night.